You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is an interview with Eduardo Marti, who is the founder of Junior Achievement, uh, both in Argentina and in many other Latin American countries. Uh, Junior Achievement is a charity that teaches entrepreneurship to children and young adults. Eduardo has held academic posts as professor at the University Francisco Marroquin in Guatemala and at the University of Buenos Aires. So I hope you enjoy the interview and thank you so much for listening. I want to ask you about uh, your work in, in founding the Junior Achievement Award because I think that is something that really is a, a fantastic project and also you know, is the seeds of long-term cultural change in many ways. But I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people, a lot of uh, listeners won't know anything about Junior Achievement. So could you just summarize what the Junior Achievement Award is and, and how you came to found it here in Argentina? Well, I was teaching in El Salvador and I saw a group of kids uh, just that I went to visit them to a high school and I saw them working and they really, they had a production department, marketing, financing, all the administrative work was very well organized, very well done, uh, human resources. And you see a general, the general manager was working fine, so I saw this is too well organized. So where, where, where did you get these ideas? They asked, they, and they told me, empresarios juveniles del Salvador, they told me, we, got, we are part of Junior Achievement family. So when I was, I, I went to the States, I went to visit them, they are in Colorado Springs, small town near Denver, and I was really impressed. The founder of Junior Achievement was Horacio Jorge's Moses, and he founded Junior Achievement in the middle of a strike. Just employees and young, uh, uh, young employees were complaining, you are making money at the expense of our workers, at the expense of, of, of the, the public. Horace Moses challenged his worker. He said, do you think I'm making money at the expense of my workers? The exploitation theory, Marxist theory. I, do you think I'm making money at the expense of public? I'm making money because I'm creating wealth. Mm. So I'm going to teach you how to do it. So we are going to meet once a week in this small building. Nothing is there. Do you have raw materials? No. Do you have capital? No. You have nothing, right? Okay. Let's, I will give you 15 weeks. In 15 weeks, you have to show me. I'm, I'm going to show you how we together, we are going to create wealth from scratch with our minds thinking. So he challenged. And that was the beginning of the Junior Achievement Company. It's, you can see that in some TED uh, conferences, yeah. that you challenge a kid, solve this problem, and you just write in the blackboard, just a very tough question, sometimes in a different language, and they find their own way. Mm. So that's the beginning of Junior Achievement, telling them that those companies always put a slogan in front. Some of them were saying things like, just do it. Mm or Nike's uh, slogan, mm. or impossible is nothing. Now, you saw those in the junior achievement companies of the beginning, or th- uh, things that junior achievement invent, right. the HP uh, uh, slogan. Right. So you see that, and, uh, and what is interesting is that uh, little by little, that culture expanded through the country, and they found a way to, to, to teach the kids, to challenge them, showing, telling them, listen, Find a product or a service that you improve the quality of life of your neighbors. And uh, you don't have capital, just go for it. Mm-hmm. Venture capital. Explain people why they are going to make money through you. So it's like a sort of entrepreneurship, mini entrepreneurship course for, for kids. For kids. How, what ages? 17, 18, 19. Right. And uh, they build their own company in 15 weeks. They create the four departments, as I told you, marketing, finances, human resources, production, and they raise capital. They buy themselves. They have three roles. They are workers because they work for a salary mm. and they determine their own salaries. Yeah. So they understand that if their salary is too high, they are, going, they are not going to attract investors because the profits of the company are going to be low. They get commissions through selling 
Uh, that's another incentive, but at the same time they get dividends from their stocks. Yeah. So they buy themselves stocks. So they see the company from the different perspectives. So I think that what you see, a kid, passive kid, that they don't know, in general, they no, do nothing in general, and they are just, just very passive kids, and suddenly they discover that they can make money through selling things, mm. because they found the product, and they, yeah. they, they, you see their faces. You see the transformation of a kid that, that he understands, he finds a way to make his own living. When he understands that process, you look at his eyes and you see a different man. Mm. When they discover the magic of thinking and creating wealth and that he can do it by himself, maybe with a stupid product, selling cakes mm. on, and uh, selling lemonade in a, in a corner. That, see, that you see in Hollywood, all the movies, that's the American sense of life. When they discover that because they, we go to the slums here, to very poor people, very right. full of immigrants because if this country is poor. The kids from Paraguay or from or from uh, of Bolivia, they are poorer. Right. And right. we have more than one million inhabitants from those countries here that they just come and they go to the public schools. But middle class, they don't want to send the, the, the kids to the public schools now. But you see them there, and when they see that they can make money through thinking, you see the process slow, but you see that they change the way the attitude. So junior achievement, what is junior achievement? This is a non-for-profit organization now in 130 countries in Argentina with 10 different offices around the country. I found it here. I found it also in Brazil, in Paraguay, and in, 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 uh, in uh, Colombia. I started to help Colombia and Spain. And uh, I, uh, I tried in Cuba for five years, tried to convince wow. Fidel, and uh, but they, they wanted to put me in prison instead of helping me to develop the country. They were just we we had to do it underground. Uh, wow, that sounds like quite an adventure. Yeah, it was it was it was it was. We tried that. I I I remember the first time I interviewed with the Ministry of Education in Cuba, and he said, I don't know if smile at you or just put you in prison. Are you telling me that you want to come here to teach capitalism to Cubans? And he said, You better know your enemy. You 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 need to you need to know that. That of course he he, he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't uh, allow us to do that, and uh, we had to do it underground. We tried for five years, right? But it became dangerous at the beginning. At the end of it, uh, my picture was in the border. Just right. I, I was being if I want to enter again, it was going to be dangerous for me and and uh, and also my my teachers. Mm. So it was amazing. It's a very very tough situation in Cuba for eighty years, right. sixty years. Sorry. But and nobody does nothing to help the Cubans. Six generations of sacrifice, yeah. and instead of, I would say that's the next step for, for humanity. When you see a dictator, instead of waiting for the army to come in, just with the civilians, we should go to, to, to work in the streets with journalists from our countries. If you see a parade of people from 50 countries with their ambassadors, just watching them in the country, the dictator will not uh, allow himself to just repress that. And people will get courage from them. There is a wonderful quote from Etienne de la Boetie, um, which is uh, that uh, in order to topple a tyrant, you don't have to uh, put a hand on him. You just have to stop believing in, in his, his power. And I think that's what you're talking about. You know, that if there's enough people who, who uh, in a sense, provide... Uh, the moral support to the people under those circumstances, yeah. then uh, without the belief in the system, it will crumble itself. The you don't need... The victim. You need to fight that. Right, exactly. You need to fight the, 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 the people just... Because, and, and the way you just... Uh, you weakened yourself is just because you, you start to believe that it can be done. You see that he's right. He has a moral value. So yeah. instead of protecting yourself, you're just helping him to take advantage of you. Right. So right. that's but, why the battle is moral. Yes, absolutely. If we want to win Argentina from our tyrants, because they are tyrants, mm -hmm. you need to fight the moral battle to explain yeah. why they are, from a moral point of view, they, they are being immoral. If you win that, 
you solve the problem very easily. Mm. So just to, to come back to junior achievement, when did you actually start it here? In 2001. The way you do it is you ask money from the firms, mm. you ask volunteers for, from the firms, you train them in your programs. We have 21, 22 business courses from kindergarten to 12th grade. So right. when you go to kindergarten, you tell them a nice story about kids in the summer board. They go to mommy and ask for money uh, to buy uh, presents, to buy a doll or to buy skateboards or whatever. And mommy says, when I was young, I was poor. And if I wanted something, I had to do it on contractual basis. Value per value, seduction. If you make me feel good, I will make you feel good instead right. of rape. If you don't make me feel good, I will make you feel bad. Right. So go and give something to the public in order for you to get the money and, and buy what you want. Mm. But it's very funny when they are five or six years old and, uh, and they blame us of just creating greedy capitalistic at a very young age. But I think that this is the reverse. Mm. What you see is kids learning to trust themselves, using their critical skills and feeling confident of they can live by their own because mm. they trust themselves that they can just invent things to give to people and they feel more confident. It's funny. Yeah. So it's a charity and you have members of the business community uh, donating their time as well to come and teach or is it mainly they donate resources and then you have uh, program teachers? Or? What you see is people just donating resources, money and also they are donating um, volunteers, right. juniors, high potential in general. Right. So you train them in your programs yeah. and you, of course you go with them to the schools, you, you audit them to see how yeah. they work and you write a report to the donor yeah. and you just uh, give them medals and yeah. whatever. So if you're in Buenos Aires on December 3rd, we are going to th have 2,000 kids in a big theater. It's like the Oscars in Hollywood because it's going to be a huge act. And uh, we are giving 11 different, um, in different competitions, medals and whatever, and they love it. In Argentina, it's a country where success is not being rewarded. Well, right. we try to do our best for the kids, especially from public schools, learn the importance of to competition, healthy competition, and the importance of just trying to be your best, trying to yeah. develop your talents, etc. So we give them good prizes. That's fantastic. So that's the award in Junior Achievement Award, is that each year there's like a, the best entrepreneurial... right? And you do it in Europe. In England, right. you have Young Enterprise. Yeah. And it's a fantastic competition and you develop through Young Enterprise all Europe. Right now, part of the Eastern countries are called Junior Achievement, but the rest of Central Europe and, and uh, France and what well, they are in called general, in general, they, they call themselves Young Enterprise. And right. that's because of the British influence. They had it in Oxford and Cambridge and it's a fantastic program. They compete all around Europe to be the best junior achievement, the best young enterprise junior achievement company of, of Europe mm. is part of a strong competition and the products are fantastic. They have to deliver, they have to argue in front of juries. Mm. In, in, in UK, they do it in a more individual basis. You don't have so many advisors. They are on their own. They are just more e-learning process right. through uh, uh, distant learning. Yeah. So you just follow and you have to, uh, to, to just follow the championship, just filling up your, your forms every week and you have to go through different steps to advance in the competition mm -hmm. and if you reach the finals you have the jury just judging which is the best company of UK so you go to the finals in Europe finally yeah fantastic how many people do you think have been through your program uh, so far 700,000 in general all the courses I'm taking right. you on the uh, kindergarten yeah, yeah. since mm -hmm. the beginning in 1991 we have been in, 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 in uh, working for 21 hour, uh, years in general for the company probably you have 50,000 people just that are achievers right so they found they understand how to create a company but in small countries this country has 40 million inhabitants the, you, start, you start to see, to feel the difference. You find achievers here and there. And you see that they, they, they think in different terms. They, are more, mm -hmm. they trust themselves more. 
you see that they some of them we have a kind of millionaire club mm. that and you see them a lot of them created internet uh, uh, business that are being very fine and they make money and they they call me and they say Eduardo your achievement has transformed my life I can't believe it I'm uh, I love it. Mm. That gave me confidence when I, I was trying to get a, a work for for for, for the, a public servant or whatever. You that, see that? That's fantastic. I, I think it's a, such a powerful thing to do and such a positive change to make. I'm curious to know what is the cultural response to junior achievement? For example, here in Argentina and may, maybe in some of the other South American countries, because I mean, even in the UK, right? There's still very much for 18 year olds, you said, you know, 17, 18 year olds, going to university and maybe becoming like a professional, like a lawyer or something would be like the ultimate high status thing to do. Entrepreneurship is still, even in, you know, in the UK, not really something that is considered to be a very, like a acceptable or good pursuit to follow you know if you really want to have a good life it's kind of an odd thing to do what is the cultural uh, response to to junior oh, achievement here remember that uh, the matrix has been in charge in the educational department in argentina in the last 110 years that has a strong influence this is a public you see imagine that you give the building of shoes the public, so they, they just one color. You probably too big, too short, with just one material. If you put your educational department in competition in the market, you have different offers for different kind of kids, right? Rural areas, the city, uh, technicals, uh, genetic innovation, uh, I don't know, uh, robotics, whatever. You see the private schools here in Argentina, despite the lack of resources, because they have to compete to the states, how they create, how they invent, they are competitive. They go to Europe, they go to US, they try to find any innovation around. They are all bilinguals, you see? You go to the public schools, they don't speak any language. They are exactly like 100 years ago, in buildings that are really destroyed, with not too much uh, heat in, in the winter, and no air conditioning in summer, so yeah, the whole system is collapsing. Mm. So instead of just understanding that and trying to recreate situation of competition and different offers, they just remain that way. What are, the, how is are people reacting? Just taking away their kids from that uh, that that system. So uh, what you see is, I think. Of course, the government resent your achievement. I have been in the first page of newspapers, all the, st the, the, the government newspapers, because they are trying to destroy free press, criticizing junior achievement, evil capitalism, uh, uh, teaching kids uh, around about money, etc. And I, of course, I defend myself on moral basis. Mm. To me, is, is something wrong with making money? They try to say, oh, he's teaching kids how to make money. What's wrong with it? You love money, you're thieves, you're exploiting, and just it's a kind, that kind of, uh, uh, but instead of producing and making your own money, you're trying to get somebody else's money. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you give them the arguments of wealth creation as a just moral justification for uh, private property, they don't know what, how to argue with that. Mm -hmm. Because they are just, they, they in, in, in that idea of, fix wealth if I make money because I'm taking away from somebody else. The Montaigne dogma mm. is in their heads. Mm. So they don't understand that this concept of creating wealth. So that's, that's something that really it discouraged them. They, mm. they are with Marx and the, and the exploitation theory and plus value theory, etc. So when you argue in those terms, they, they really get... But no, they resent that. They try to stop us from just allowing ourselves to enter the public schools. They put us obstacles, but parents love it. Right. So it's tough for them to tell them, your kids are not going to have this because we are not allowing you, you see? Right. So we are finding ourselves a way to enter the public schools. And we find obstacles, but here and there we have found a way. And 
at, at behind your achievement, we have 2,000 firms. Right. You see, that right. invest money. How much money? Right now, $2 million per year. Right. In poor countries like Argentina, to get from the private sector $2 million is a lot of money. Very significant. Very significant. And uh, we just do our best. Of course, American companies help us a lot because they know how the system works and they know your achievement in the state. So this, mm. they go to, we, we write uh, proposals to them and they, they help us a lot. Yeah. They have representatives here in Argentina and they are part of our board. We have a whole system. You need to give them, a, you, when a firm is giving you money, you need to spoil them. HSBC, by the way, has been the most important uh, donor in the last two years. Right. They are helping a lot, a lot really giving us representatives, donors, and they go to the schools, they, they are part of the junior achievement family here. But the answer is yes, they, you need to, you need, what I tell our, our businessman, why do you have to invest in junior achievement? Because you need to protect and to grow the civil society and to shrink the politician sphere. Yeah, yeah. We have a writer called Borges, Jorge Luis Borges was yes. a famous writer. He used, used to say, liberty is the space that the soul needs. So that's why you keep distance in UK. And when you are in Disney, you see the Americans just respecting each other. So when you go to a bank here, you see people just looking at each other in the file. They are just close, you mm -hmm. see? They, that's why it's wide in the States, everything is wide, because you need space, you see. Right. Uh, but if you go to Chichicasteango with the Mayas, they have a, a, an area of 10,000 kilometers, square kilometers, and they're all together, like a grape. Yeah. And you ask yourself, why are they so close? Because that's what you see is a soul that needs to be developed. Right. They're part of a group. Right. You see, sacrifice for the common good, mm. Rousseau, yeah. Kant. The problem at the end is philosophical, as Ayn Rand used to say, you see. Yes, yeah. It's philosophical. What you need is to develop individu individuality. The idea of that you are entitled to your own happiness. And do you see that happening with the people who've, with the kids who've gone through junior achievement? I mean, have, have they... Do you have any kind of examples of people who have gone on to really make a difference and show their individuality? Yes, yes. Once, if you give a mind the chance to trust themselves, what I call it, the sense of efficacy, when you see them, that they trust themselves, they become individuals. They start, they start from a business point of view because they sense the feeling is, I don't need anybody else to survive. I can do it by my own. I will find something that people need mm. and that attitude, it helps you to do introspection. What type of music do I like? What I, who am I? When I go to the schools, I give them a speech called Aladino on how to build your own dreams, how to reach your own dreams. And when I ask them, what do you want from life? They don't know. Mm. And why do you don't know? And the answer is probably because I never explore myself. I never ask myself why not? Because I don't feel that if I find the answer, I will have the means to do anything with that. To do it. Yeah, yeah. So the next question is okay, okay. So we need to build that capacity, right? We mm. need to make you. Uh, would you like to trust yourself? Would you like to take the risk? Taking risks, those American values, go for it, impossible is nothing, Kipling, uh, be a man, yeah. right? So that, that type of feeling, so I don't know, probably the answer is, are we, are we pushing the right way? I know. How influenced we are, I don't know, because we teach, we have, with, in these courses, you spend 15 weeks with the kids. You are a small influence in an ocean yes. of socialism, mm. but in the, in the matrix. But some of them really wake up. Mm. And some of them really start to think in terms of, okay, I can do it. I know we are such 
Yeah, you probably saw Matrix, right? Yes. We take four or five minds out of thirty. Right. But that's making a difference, little by little. So I, I think I it's. My best. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful program. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, what's the future for both the program and your involvement? Where, where does it go next? <clears throat> I'm, as I told you, I'm more an abstract man. So I think that uh, I, I, I discover in general, because of my father probably, but I also discover uh, free markets and capitalism when I went to Grove City to study under Senkhold. Senkhold was student of Ludwig von Mises. Yes together with Murray Rothbard, together with Israel Kirchner. Mm. So he taught me the importance of free market economics. So what I would like to know to do now is to take the, my best achievers in the last 10 or 20 years and to offer them a master degree right. of one year, a mix of entrepreneurship, go and do this, go and find the best businessman in the world and make them an interview get get their secrets ask them questions how do you do it and uh, and of of course also try to do your own business try to you need to practice you are not going to win wimbledon if you didn't win your clubs <laughs> tennis right you better start by doing it in a small scale yeah so that's entrepreneurship i wanted to practice different projects year after year, small projects. They don't have to be fantastic at the beginning. I want them to study the difference between the American Revolution, the glorious revolution in England, and the French Revolution. Mm. They think that understanding freedom may, means to understand the French Revolution with the Jacobins, with Robespierre, with yeah. Rousseau. That's the opposite. That brings you Hitler and Stalin. So I want you, I want them, the students, to learn the difference between the Anglo-Saxon history of Locke and Adam Smith and Ayn Rand and Hayek and Mises and, and, and the other world, the common good world. Yeah. So unless, and I want them to learn that in, maybe in UK. I want, to, I want them to see the fight for freedom and what freedom means, the Carta Magna. Yes, yeah, the Magna Carta. Yeah. So you got in your genes, it's part of you, you see? But it's not part of this part of the continent that we, we studied under Spaniard codes and French literature. It's more Latin culture. Right. So, but if I can form 50, 60, 70 students per year, I will make a difference because they will be very influential later. I want them to learn free market economics, Murray Rothbard and, 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 and the Mises Institute and uh, the Foundation for Economic Education in New York, Larry Reed, and the Institute for Humane Studies in Virginia. Mm. And I, so I want them to learn how the markets work and know how to argue against those stupid theories that are being taught, the Keynesian theories too, mm -hmm. that really hurt this country too. And uh, that's free market economics, entrepreneurship, history, and philosophy. Right. I, they need to learn the importance of Aristotle's against Plato. They need to understand the importance of concepts and reality and truth against pragmatism, against moral, uh, uh, epistemological uh, relativism. Mm. The idea that nobody can be sure of anything. Of course, that's a contradiction, but they need to learn that. I think that if I teach them for one year a little bit of philosophy, mm. a little bit of free market economics, history, that they learn the difference between the British Revolution the American Revolution, the French Revolution, yeah. and entrepreneurship, if I just form 40, 50 kids per year that understand the process and know how to argue, you change the country. Right. We, I'm part of uh, 10 people who was sent, were sent to the States during the 80s, between yeah, 1979 and 1989. And we all become professors, teachers. We are just one per year. And we all have been very successful. Alex Chafuen is running the Atlas Economic Research Foundation in Florida, in, in Florida, in Virginia, and in, in Washington. And it has been very, very successful. 
Chantandius University has been run by another Grover, Grove City College with St. Holmes called uh, Zimmerman, mm -hmm. Eduardo Zimmerman. And all of us, the all of us who went to, to Grove City to study with St. Holmes, we are working for freedom. So right. we consider ourselves a kind of freedom force. So I think that we did that in 10 years. I've been working all my life trying to help to, to, add, to add some common sense to this country. So I think that if I can send 40, 50 students to spoil them with Northwood College in Palm Beach, to Oxford in England, to Chicago, so that they feel the atmosphere of what capitalism is. And I, can th I think that I, that could be the last part of my contribution, I would say. Right. I'm going to be 60 in December. Right. So from the, my 60s to my 70s, I hope to be able to develop that master. Junior Achievement is an institution in Argentina. We have 10 offices, 70 employees, can't work without me. So it would be a kind of part of junior achievement, a kind of senior achievement. Yeah, I understand. More of the, to give more of a philosophical foundation in that master's course that could then develop... Said, together with entrepreneurship. Right, right. They are, if you're an intellectual, the problem with intellectuals is they, know, they, they are always running out of money. They <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're always poor. So we are teaching like Mises. Oh, you're teaching capitalism, but, but people, they, they need to, they don't understand the difference between this idea of, okay, I understand the whole context, and that's different from being a businessman yourself, because in order to make money, what you need is to give value to the society, and when you are just explaining the context, you are not giving value to a particular human being, you are just giving to a society, a whole society, and society, they, they don't write checks. They do it on an individual basis. Mm. And you, you can make contributions here or there. That's, right. yeah, I'm just explaining myself that way because through organizing junior achievement, uh, I, I found a way to receive donations. I have a pretty decent salary, but I, 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 I never reach your state that I can not work for one year, you see? So, I'm teaching something and the kids learn fast, some of them are millionaires already, but I haven't applied that for myself. Right. So I think that the new generation needs to understand the importance of both worlds, right. to be able to explain the context and to explain to the businessman and to the community that you cannot fish in a polluted lake, that you need to understand that you cannot be a businessman in Argentina because you will have to pay tribute to Christina mm. and, 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 and at the same time you need to you, you need to make money to be independent so find a way at the Kiyosaki style yeah find yeah. your own business so you can relax yourself etc fantastic Eduardo it's been such a pleasure talking to you I, I want to ask you one last question which is for people who are interested in both your your writing your work and also in junior achievement, could you tell me where should they look on the internet? What uh, can you give me some links and things for them to follow? Well, you can you can go to Junior Achievement Argentina three uh, www.junioachievementargentina.com. You can go to uh, I have a small blog called Libertad Querida in Facebook. It's not a blog. It's how do you call that? A page. A, a page in Facebook. A page. It's called Libertad Querida, the Argentinian Tea Party, where I just share my thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's a very aggressive because I'm fighting the government. <laughs> I organize parades and etc. So you will see a lot of insults, but it's funny to read, especially if you want to practice your Spanish. That's what I'm doing now. Libertad Querida, yeah. Junior Achievement. That's yeah. it. Thank you so much for the interview. It's been re really That's great talking to you. I, I want to thank you. Thank you for the interview and for just a surprising interview. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Brilliant. But it's nice too that people from abroad see what we do and that we have smart people in Argentina fighting for the good, good cause. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.